right now our guy is back that's right we're talking to Demontre Moore longtime NFL veteran Texas A&M product played for Dan Campbell uh, during his year that he played in the NFL for the Miami Dolphins he is our guy Demontre first off man appreciate you jumping back on with us how you doing man hey I'm doing good appreciate y'all for having me back long time no see how y'all doing <laughs> And doing well, bro. Uh, abs- absolutely, man. But De- Demontre, I mean, th- there are a couple of things that, that I want to get get to with you. And, and number one is this, man. You're a longtime NFL veteran. You went through a lot of preseasons. Um, it, I've noticed that this has become almost like a like a political type narrative in that when when fans have their guy that they like, if he play or if they don't like, if they play well. It's, you know, he looks great. Everything is awesome. If they don't play well, uh, you know, he's a bust. We don't know what's going on. Uh, If it's a guy they don't like and he plays well, they say, yeah, well, it was against backups. For the record, you've been through this before, man. Preseason NFL football. These guys are still pros out there, right? I mean, break that down. A rookie is not a bust. And anytime somebody does well, it's not because it's against second string guys, right? Break down the preseason for me. First and foremost, everything is opinion based. Um, you can come up with these narratives and paint whatever narrative you want to. Everybody's a pro. Uh, we put our pants on one leg at a time. We all got here and we're capable of being here to line up. So it's an honor to even be out on that field. It's, you can't be so fast to label guys as a bust and, you know, put these narratives on players, like give them time to develop. You're a rookie coming in. Some people have success right away. And some people are like wine, they get better with time, but it's a it's a gradual thing. It's a slow pace. Like you have a long season and it's not about who's playing their best football right now. It's who's playing their best football later on at the end of the season, later in the uh, season leading into the playoffs, getting to the Super Bowl. So give people the time to develop. Every starter wasn't a starter when they first jumped in. Of course, unless you're a first round draft pick, people didn't work their butts to get to where they're at. At one point in time, Richard Sherman wasn't the top guy and then became the guy. Like, Seattle is a fine uh, example of people starting out late and then going on to be superstars. Detroit, same with those players. You have guys like Indomitian and Sue that comes in day off back, killing. And then you have other guys that it takes time to get into your mold. So you can't just be so quick to just throw these labels out there. Uh, Demacha, thanks for joining us, but I was good to catch up to you. Uh, more on that yes, be, being at training camp, right? So take us yes. through after, and you remember, and, and obviously it changed, but as a rookie or as a second year guy trying to establish yourself after the first exhibition game. So, right, we're in between game one and two here in Detroit and stuff like this. What are some of the conversations the coaches and, and everybody's having, right? We're, we're talking about our guys, Jamison Williams, Sam Laporta dropping balls, maybe not some guys, you know, maybe miss some tackles or want to get better. What's the conversation coming out of training camp in week two for especially the young guys because confidence has to be a big thing. Confidence is a big thing in everything that you do, but coming out of week two, your coach is coming there and saying, all right, guys, it's time to relax. You didn't got your first NFL game up under your belt. Now let's get back to the basics. Let's get away from the glitz and glamour. Like, let's go in here and examine the film. What were you bad at? What can you be better at? How can you get better and be more prepared? And now that you don't have the bright lights, you know what's going to happen. You get past the excitement of giving tickets to uh, whoever's coming to see you and stuff like that. Now it's back to the meat and the bones and trying to make this team. And you should be more confident. You should build... um, you should be a little more sound in your scheme and the butterfly should be out and you should be coming in firing with better bullets and constantly improving. And if you're not improving, then you won't be there. Demontre Moore, our guest here on Big D Energy. Good to have Demontre back on again. Was a third round draft pick out of Texas A&M. So Demontre, look, yeah. obviously here in Detroit, uh, Dan Campbell, uh, Lions mania, uh, people betting all their money on the Detroit Lions to win the Super Bowl. I mean, like it's 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 going crazy, Demontre. And and I want to ask you this because as we talked about earlier, and you talked about in the past, you played for Dan Campbell that year. He was the uh, interim coach down in Miami. It, for, I know you're not in the locker room. I understand that, so I'm not putting you on the spot from that perspective. But what you know of the man, why is it working like this in Detroit? with Dan Campbell. Why is it working here? Man, the way that it's working is simple. 
Detroit is Dan Campbell, and Dan Campbell is Detroit. When I say this man is a big, exemplifies everything that city does from the gritness, the toughness, getting it out the mud, and building it on your bare back. That is Dan Campbell from being a former player, being out there in those trenches, going to war, and having that excitement, to being a coach now, seeing it behind the coach's view, knowing how it is. It's such, 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 something so simple as having the stress of going through training camp and being so tight and up knit of, hey, are you going to make the team or are you not? He's going to find a way to relate to the player, but also still coach him to get better and be the best player that they could be, but also appeal to the person as the player, but not only as the player, but as the person. I told you last time I was here that Dan Campbell came and said, hey, I don't care what was said about you. I'm not oblivious. I know what was said because I'm here, but also I want you to build your own person. And just like he builds his own narrative and coaching perspective, it goes on and on. And when I say I can't – I get chills and goosebumps thinking about it again because he is made for this city and it's working. He is building the foundation. The foundation has been laid and now he's just going to keep continuing to build and get better and get better and biting ankles. Uh, Demontre, so he's got the juice, right? Like, but he, he's got the juice, right? He definitely does. The juice is, I, I wouldn't even say juice because when you think of juice, you can drink juice. I say he got sauce. <laughs> think about barbecue sauce, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> How long have you left some barbecue sauce in that refrigerator, but you come back and get some sweet baby rays and it's still there and it tastes just as good? It's something that's internal. It's solid. It's, oh, it's foundation. It's not it's not foaming. It's there. And that's preach it's got, thick, got Spenny. It's thick, baby. That's he's what thick, it is. Baby. He's thick and he's here to stay. That's why MCDC, Motor City Dan Campbell, yeah. is so apropos and and you, you, you nailed it. You nailed it there. And and the one thing, Demontre, is that I am hearing you as a, as a former athlete and speaking athlete speak. What you're saying is he's genuine, and when he says it, he means it. He's not coach speaking. He's not talking behind the back. It's the fact that he's a man, right? He, and he treats everybody like men until it's time not to, right? It, would that be fair to say? And you hit the nail right on the hammer with it. He treats people like men because he's a man and he's going to see you and approach you as a man. But also as a man, he was a player. And he still is a player. You see him out there doing the up, downs, and uh, jump starts at the beginning of practice. Like, he's there with you. So he knows what he's going through with you. And for him to be that genuine, that focused, and for he's a see ball, get ball type of coach. Like, I tell you what to do, I tell you how to do it, and if you do this, it's going to ride and it's going to fly, and we're going to let the chips fall wherever they fall, but just know I'm right there with you so I can fall with you, baby. I'm falling, we either fall into success or we fall into failure together, but just know your captain is right here with you, and if your captain's right there with you as a player, I'm talking about you ready to go mm, into that wall and lights out. All right, Demontre, you got the people all worked up in the WilbertSports.com chat thread right now. Bothered, buddy. They're bricked off. Stoked, not scared. I'm over here having flashbacks over here thinking about it. Well, good. good. That's good because I I want a Dan Campbell story, Demontre. Give me me, me one Dan Campbell story from your time maybe when you were down in Miami. I would say my favorite Dan Campbell story is last game of the season. I don't know if I mentioned it. Uh, I know – I mentioned how everybody was cheering for him last time I was here. But going a little more in depth, the day before leading into that game, he said, I don't know what's going to happen. He knew that this is a potential interview and setting him up for the future. But he wasn't even putting that pressure on himself. He came in there and said, hey, we're going against the Patriots. And when we go against the Patriots, we're going against Brady, the GOAT. I'm talking about Tom Thomas Patrick Edward Brady. We in there going <laughs> against that guy. And he said, for you right now, this is an audition. Just like it's an audition for me, it's an audition for you to go out there and say that you're not going to lay down and you're going to quit. Let's go in somebody's season. Let's go make something a little bit more difficult and challenging for somebody else. Just like they doing this for us, we're going to do this for them. I'm going to war with you guys. And when I tell you, it was like a scene out of 300. You see Dan Campbell up there, big, swole guy, and he's giving this powerful, embodied speech. Everybody was like, you know what? We come out here, we play the pitcher. Mm, it's smash mouth football and when i tell you and we did everything he said won that game and had the same excitement and he said hey i want to tell you guys y'all just killed y'all interview 
Y'all killed it, and I don't know what's going to happen after there, but I just know that y'all laid it out there, and we were so excited that everybody erupted talking about Dan Campbell this, throwing water in the locker room. When the owner comes in there talking about the interviews about to come back up, like it's going to be a tough process, but we know who we want. Uh, everybody's yelling Dan Campbell at this guy, and like this is the owner now. When you when the owner talks, nobody talks, and you're sitting here chanting this. That lets you know that your leader is right here, and he's just like the guy from 300. They do whatever I say. And so it was amazing. And I can't imagine with the staff that he's built. Uh, I played with Kevin uh, Shepard. Uh, for him to see him have that passion on the sideline, he's built that in there. And, man, when I tell you, I can only imagine, it, like, now that he's at the helm, what it's really like to be in Detroit in a grimy city like that and that's ready to work, he probably got some great things going over there. But that's Absolutely. probably, like, my best story about him. That that is so awesome, dude. I'm I'm gonna take this uh, before we let you go, a uh, little little bit sideways because this is a question for Spenny and me because uh, we follow you at Timor <laughs> Timor ninety four. Uh, uh, Notice you blowing guys away Call of Duty. What's your favorite Call of Duty version? Which game? Do you have a favorite? Um, I would probably say Modern Warfare Two is my yeah. favorite. Yeah, my yeah, favorite. that's what Spenny you and know, I said. Uh, okay. We go, we go. Me and my uh, me and my crew. I got a couple coaches that play in the league that uh are down, but we're on every Call of Duty. But Modern Warfare Two, I probably say, was the one where we got the most athlete active, and it was just uh, it's timeless. Like, yeah. But we're gonna see what this new one hitting for. It's almost that time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, I, all right. I have what, to step in. Uh, we're, Spenny, where are you at with it? Modern Warfare Two yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, all it's day. the go. All day. There okay. you go. Okay. Uh, okay. Hey, right, Demontre. I. Like. I, I I, I, I appreciate you pulling up on us, man, for thanks, sure. Brother. Appreciate you, Demontre. Right, we'll get, we'll get you me. back. Absolutely. Oh, I can't wait, man. Mark, this man, this you, man's dude. got people fired up, man. Oh, yeah. dude, as he should, man. I'm fired up. Yeah. I, if you're not bricked and stoked already, game's not till Saturday, second exhibition game. Let's go, baby. Come on. Man, I'm telling you, y'all got some young cats over there doing it right now. That, that crazy catch um, uh, from the receiver, the, uh, he hit the little... Uh, Oh, like Jamison Williams? Oh, oh yeah. the one yeah, you caught? Jamison Williams, thank you. I, oh, man, that catch was so spectacular that it had me lost the word. I couldn't even say his name right now. It was like, hmm. But hmm. I'm ready to see hmm. what he does, man. Hmm. Like, this is about to be a crazy week. Like, I don't think Detroit knows, like, the gym that they have right there. Like, that diamond has been built right there. And so, ah, man, I, I'm watching I'm – watching the, I'm watching y'all's Instagram story every day. I'm watching Kelvin Shepard's uh, every day. That's my dog. We talk at least once a month. And the energy and excitement around that building. Uh, <laughs> hey, they're, hey, they're one of my dark horses this year. There you go. All right, Demontre, appreciate you, brother. We'll catch up again. Thanks, bro. Yes, sir. All right, there he is, everybody. Demontre awesome. Moore, longtime NFL vet. You know, just a guy that played in the league talking about that, you know, the catch was special. Even if Sam Flannel wants to dismiss it, guys that played well, in the league, Sam, they like we, it. I'm sure when we come back, Sam will cut down, you know, what's he know? He only played in the league. Yeah, for, for eight years yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah. He, probably, he probably will. Uh -huh.